Hi guys, just thought I'd do a quick review of this Extron's radio that I've got in my Toyota Aris. Um, it's the one with DSP, digital sound processing, built into it, so it's got a few more settings on the audio. Um, so yeah, let's just see what it's like. So ignition on, a couple of seconds later, comes on. Let's turn the volume down on that. So, starting from the beginning, you've got the home screen. And let's see if I can get that to focus. Here we go. Um, the colour you're seeing in the video isn't the colour that I'm seeing because it's at a funny angle. I've had to wedge the phone to try and get it to sit there nice and steady because I didn't want to hold it and shake it around. So this is the home screen. <clears throat> You've got um, time. This is uh, what's playing now, which is the radio was the last thing I was using. Um, You've got a little rocket to speed things up, close all the programs that are on. Um, not that I've ever found it to be laggy or anything. It's always pretty snappy. Um, these buttons here are just to bring up the volume and the brightness if you want to change them. But obviously being Android you can also just pull down the menu and do the brightness up here if you want. <coughs> um, you've got radio, basic. Um, it is a really basic radio, there's not many settings on it. Um, you can move it across left and right to wherever your station you want. You can just tap the search button left and right and it will find a, st find a station for you. Magnifying glasses for auto store, press that and it will go through the whole list and then save whatever it finds in the presets down the bottom. The presets go up to 18, so you've got a few presets there. Um, stereo mono, not really much use to me. Local and national radios, AM and FM. Auto frequency, traffic announcements, PTY I've never actually used, so maybe someone else can tell me what PTY does. Um, that's pretty much it for the radio, it's really basic, um, does the job, that's pretty much it. So back to the home screen. Music, it's labelled as music but what it actually is, is music from USD card or USB stick. So that just plays like that. <clears throat> Swipe it to the left, you can go through your tracks. I've just literally just dumped a whole load of stuff off my computer so nothing's actually labelled there. But if you've got some, um, if you've got some music that's actually got names on it, <clears throat> it'll actually come up over here, obviously, and show you what's playing. Um, again, this is pretty basic. Rewinds, pulls, fast forward. Um, like I say, swipe left for files. Uh, list it by album. List it by artists. Um, you've got flash drive, which is the inbuilt memory. And then you've got USB which is obviously USB, and if you stick an SD card in it, that'll be there as well. It also comes with some adapters for extra USB plugs, so it doesn't matter how many USBs you plug into it, they'll all appear here if they've got music or video on. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. Pretty basic. You can change the equaliser whilst you're in there as well, so whatever you want. If you don't want to go back out of it and go into the audio settings to change them. Um, got a little button here for bringing up a little graph, little equaliser. I'll just turn it off because it's a bit distracting really. Um, that's pretty much that side of it. Bluetooth is your phone part of your Bluetooth, so that's for making calls and stuff. So once this is all connected to Bluetooth, which I've turned mine off recently because I've been using my phone in someone else's car, but you'll have your dialer there, your contacts, um, make and receive calls, Bluetooth settings to add and remove devices. <clears throat> I've also got OBD installed as well which is uh, a lot of people are probably familiar with so you can get talk up. That all seems to work quite swiftly. So if we go back out of that I've uh, also got TomTom Go installed. Um, it took some installing, it took a while to download it <clears throat> and now that it's installed it takes usually about 10 seconds to load up which ain't a massive deal for me, but the thing with these car radios that are cheap, they use uh, cheap processors which are considered slow, but in a car where you're not doing the same sort of things you are with a mobile phone, they're actually quite snappy. Until you install something like this, which just takes up a lot of memory. But um, it seems to work quite swiftly. I just like TomTom Go because it just works, and uh, there's not much lag once you're in the app. It just takes about 10 seconds to load up the app. The only bug I've found with TomTom Tom is that no matter what you do with the volume, 
whether it's on 100% or 20%, it'll always give you traffic warnings and beeps and whatever, you, whatever voice comes out of it, all at the same volume as the car volume. So whatever volume you've got the radio on, that's the volume it'll come out at. Which is a little bit annoying when you listen to music and out of nowhere it starts beeping at you turning as a traffic camera. But um, yeah, apart from that, that all seems to work pretty well. Um, I've got Spotify installed, so that just works as you'd expect. Um, I've got a lot of data on my phone, so I just connect it to my hotspot on my phone and just use that. And that seems to work pretty well. Having a lot of trouble focusing this camera. <clears throat> so yeah, Spotify is pretty basic. Um, Amplify, that's where all the settings are. So you've got your equaliser with all your different settings on it. Rock, pop, jazz, classic, flat. And then you've got loud settings, which is split into two. So you've got the bass side of the loud and the treble side of the loud. And you can change them to get it how you want it. Fat is a bit like a 3D surround sort of affair, so it makes it sound a bit more 3D surround, I suppose. Cut frequency cuts out the lower frequencies from the front door speakers and the rear door speakers. So if you've got a sub installed, you can cut the frequency to whatever the sub can do and get less vibrations in your doors and let the sub do its job, get better sound out the front speakers. Um, bass is pretty much for people that haven't got a sub. So that just, you can set the frequency that you want and then amplify that frequency through your speakers on the car if you've got a nice set of speakers. Um, if you have got a sub, then don't bother with that because that also affects the sub. So leave that switched off and then just cut the frequency from the front speakers and turn the sub on and adjust the volume for that on the sub. Then you've got two settings here, common and specialty. See if I can get it to focus a bit better. So we've got common is like a basic setting. You've got fade forwards, backwards, left and right. Um, you've got some presets for driver, which is obviously for the American market. It's on the wrong side for us in the UK. Um, but yeah, you can change that to wherever you want. You can just move it around like that, or you can just tap it and it will change over. Um, <clears throat> if you go into specialty, it bypasses everything in the fade section and then you do it all over again in this bit. So you've got a delay option. So if you turn the delay on, you can move it forwards or backwards to change where the delay is. So it makes it sound like the music is further forwards or further backwards than it is, left and right. But then you've got fader, which you can reduce the volume for speakers that are close to you. So it sounds like the volume is more central and you can do that in steps of decibels. Um, I don't really use that much. Um, and then you've also got presets, again, for co-pilot, driver, rear left, rear right, user, back to the middle. There's also some extra settings for um, car speaker distance settings for horizontal and vertical, so you can change them to get the sound exactly how you want it. Um, but if you do go back into common, all of the stuff in specialty is cancelled and it goes back to fader. So decide what you want what sounds best and just leave it on that setting and then you can adjust these and then you can adjust the equaliser as well if you want to adjust that. I usually leave my equaliser flat because I like to hear music the way it was originally made as much as possible. So if we go back out of that that's pretty much the whole amplifier done. A2DP is your Bluetooth for music so <clears throat> once you've connected Bluetooth that will just come up with a great big thing in the middle saying stop and play and then rewind and fast forward. It's really basic, nice and easy for when you're driving. Even easier when you've got it plugged into your steering wheel controls, which I have. Um, there's a few things in here which ain't really much use, like a clock. This is all Android stuff, so you've got alarms if you want an alarm, timers, stopwatch. Not really stuff you'd use in a car, but it's all Android, so it's there. Um, downloads is stuff you downloaded. I've got Audible installed, so you know. Everyone loves a bit of Harry Potter in the car when they're sitting in traffic doing two miles an hour. <clears throat> so you can download all this and just listen to it. It's also got a car feature which makes the buttons bigger, easier to press if you want to rewind 30 seconds or fast forward. That all seems to work alright. DVR is not in use by me at the moment, 
but it's there so that if you've got a camera plugged in <clears throat> into the correct port on the back of the radio and you've got a USB or an SD card installed that's got enough memory on it it will work as a traffic camera or um, a dash cam so it will record constantly while the radio is switched on while the ignition is on so I don't think I'd use it because to me this radio with its cheap processor in it I think it would just be too much for it I haven't tried it and it probably will work fine but I wouldn't want to chance it so I'll just use my own traffic camera if I want to use that um, AV in is another RC, RCA jack on the back that you can plug a games console into or you can plug a DVD drive into this doesn't come with a DVD drive so you can get one of them extra and plug that into it if you want to plug it in the AV um, there is another setting for F cam yeah this one over here F cam so you've got DVR for recording and you've got F cam for front camera so you can have a second camera that's pointing at the curb or something and you can press that to view the curb when you're parking and you can also swap that to the rear camera or the front camera so you can have you, in effect you can have three cameras on it if you want one for dash cam one for front parking cam one for rear parking cam and you can also reverse the image if it's needs reversing some cameras aren't reversed as standard for when you're reversing so I will get some of them installed soon but I bought one from eBay from China it's taken ages to come it's been a month so far I might just give up on it and buy another one it's only like three quid um, DAB isn't installed on this radio but the app is installed so if I bought a USB dongle to add DAB and put the aerial in um, that would all work seamlessly and you can have a digital radio in the car it won't connect because there's nothing plugged in um, calculator, calendar, chrome obviously works when you've got Wi-Fi and you're connected to your house or if you're going from your mobile phone easy connect is your mirror link so you can do it via USB cable or Wi-Fi um, or you can use iPhone on it as well and that will mirror what's on your phone on the screen so the only thing that the only problem I've got with this radio is the fact that it can't handle Netflix on our TV or most streaming video applications um, I've even tried it via Miralink so that Netflix now TV is playing on my phone expecting it to come up on the screen but for some reason the, the video just doesn't work um, I think one one of the apps the uh, sound come through and the video didn't work and then the other app if it was now TV just said it wouldn't work at all and um, just gave up an error message so for some reason we can't play videos on it you can play videos off a USB dongle if you plug it in if you've uh, ripped a DVD on the computer and put it on a dongle or any videos that you've taken on your mobile phone but you can't play streaming services for some reason so I did look it up, Some said something about the chips can't handle it or something some sort of protocol that they're using nowadays um, TPMS is installed if you've got the kit for tyre sensing and that will tell you your pressure your tyres and all that I haven't got it yet but thinking about it file browser is quite a basic file browser just look at all the files that are on the flash drive on the radio on your phone video is just a video player so you've got any videos on an SD card yeah plan pretty basic fast forward rewind GPS info just gives you a rough idea of how good your signal is so maps comes on here as standard you can use that if you've got Wi-Fi Play Store I've got talk installed as well which will take far too long to actually go in. it's not even plugged in so I won't bother going into that but everyone knows what talk does you connect to it you can see all your car information um, wheel key no wheel key um, this is where you set up your steering wheel so on the on the model of Toyota Yaris I've got I've got this steering wheel so I've got these buttons so I've just set it up as volume down volume plus track back track forward hold it down for two seconds to cancel a call hold it down for two seconds to answer a call and then this button I've got as mute and then if you hold it down it will take you to the home screen 
So you can set up two things for each button, except for the volume. Because obviously if you hold down the bottom volume, you don't want it doing something silly and opening another app because you just want the volume to go down quick. This steering wheel has got three wires in the back. I believe they are blue, not blue, no, I think they're red, black and white. The black one needs to go to the negative side so you can put it into the, put a little terminal on it and put it into the radio mounting screw just to earth it. Um, the red and the white go to key one and key two on the wires on the back of the radio. It's as simple as that to wire up the steering controls on this car. Don't know what it would be like with other cars or other Aris's that have got different connections, but if you've got three wires, then that's all you have to do. Just put the black to earth and put the two other wires to the back of the radio, key one and key two. Once you've done that, every time you press a button, it will come up saying you've it's uh, found a button, and then you can press it to change what you want it to do. And that all seems to work quite well. So let's exit out of that. Um, I've got YouTube installed. This doesn't. I mean, yeah, it's YouTube. It's pretty basic. Um, so a couple of other things I installed just for testing and stuff. I've put sound meter on there just to test the microphone, just because people was having trouble hearing me. But I feel I might just have to get a microphone and plug it in the back rather than relying on the standard built-in one. Um, DVR. I think that. Is something to do or something very similar to uh, this DVR over here. I'm not sure if it's a different app but I think it does a similar sort of thing. I think one of them is a DVR that just shows you the video and the other one is how you access the saved files so you can play them back. Um, navigation is a link to Google Maps and it's got a couple of other things on it just for viewing the files. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's an Android radio. It just looks like a tablet. So anything you can do on a tablet, you can do on here. Um, it's got similar sort of settings. Focus. Um, it's got all the usual settings you'd expect. It's got a few extra ones like elements. You can change the colour of the buttons on the side to match your interior. It's taken me ages to get the right kind of amber, so I'll just leave that as it is. Um, Oh, just similar tablet sort of stuff. <clears throat> then you've got a few extra settings for driving settings. Do you want to watch videos while you're driving? You know, be dangerous, crash your car, blah, blah, blah. Extra settings. Is there a delay when you want to turn the ignition off? Do you want it to stay on for 30 seconds or an hour? Um, reversing the camera mirrors in case it's not already reversed. Put a ruler on there so you can get grid lines up when you're reversing. Give you an idea of how far away your things are. Um, amplifier just takes you back to the amplifier. Steering wheel keys takes you straight back to the steering wheel keys app. And that's about it. If you go into factory settings, there's a password. I think it's 126. And then that will bring up all of your factory settings. If you change something that you're not sure what it does, you might have a bit of trouble trying to use your radio afterwards because uh, they there's a password on there for a reason to stop people from mucking about with it but if you go into there and you go straight to the the one that changes your picture to Toyota rather than Electrons and you can do that and if you ever disconnect your battery next time you load the radio up it'll have a Toyota logo on there but the Toyota logo isn't really relevant with this radio because it never actually turns off it just goes to sleep so you never actually get a chance to see it um, that's pretty much it. The only problem that I had with this radio, it was a bit of a glitch, it was a software glitch, and it was to do with the MCU file. So the MCU file, or drivers, is what tells the chip. The chip, the MCU chip, uh, communicates with the hardware that's on the radio, like all the inputs, the cameras and the buttons, and then that's like a bridge between the hardware and the processor for the Android. So the Android can't talk directly to the buttons and all the inputs on the radio. It has to go through this MCU chip. So there's a separate bit of software for the MCU chip. Now the problem I was having is that every time I turn the radio off, go out of the car, lock the car, come back to the car, switch the car on, 
about 50% of the time, the music would come full blast through the rear speakers, which the first couple of times it happens makes you jump a bit. But after that, I sort of got used to it and, you know, if it come through loud, turn it back off again, let it shut down, switch it on again and it'll be alright. But eventually, after some talking to the Facebook side of Extrons, um, they sent me a link to a file to download to upgrade the MCU, um, which was, uh, I can't remember what, the, um, what date the MCU file is, I think it's April. Um, it'd be an about machine. MCU, yeah, so I've got the April 13, 2008 version. Before that, I had an earlier version, and that was causing that problem. But since I've updated it, this has been seamless. No problems, no uh, glitches or anything, it just works. So, the only reason I wasn't going to do this review earlier, because I thought the radio was just faulty, but since I've updated that MCU file, it's just worked perfectly. So that's pretty much an overview of the radio. It all seems to work pretty swiftly. I mean, I quite like it. If I had £200 to spend on a radio, I'd definitely buy this one. Um, not really sure whether having the extra settings makes much of a difference because you're always limited by the chip that's in there. It's not a bad chip, DSP, but it could be a bit better. I've had a Sony radio before which had a load of different settings for raising the volume up and surround settings and stuff and it sounded really good but no matter what I do on this one it never sounds perfect it sounds a lot better than a standard radio definitely it's definitely an improvement but it, you, it can get better so it's not quite up to Sony's or Alpine standards if you want to get into expensive stuff but it's all right if you've got an extra amplifier then it might be worth using that if you want really crystal clear sound but for the everyday driver that's just you know not that worried about the radio just want it to sound good it's definitely improvement over the last radio that was in here the standard radio um that's pretty much it that's all the settings everything it does um once i get some cameras installed i might just do an overview of how the cameras work but they'll be pretty basic you got a play store so you can sign into it and download other apps if you can think of any other apps that you might want on here but as I say, the only thing you can't do is stream video, which was really annoying because I thought there's no point in having a DVD. It doesn't matter that I've got not got a DVD drive because I can just uh, do streaming, but it turns out you can't. So you can watch YouTube videos, but no Now TV or Netflix. So that's pretty much it. That's sort of the quick intro of the uh, DSP Android Xtrons Radio.